Hi everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at the difference between equations and identities. In example number one we have an example of an equation. You might have seen something like this before. 2x plus 1 equals 7 minus x. Well that's a linear equation. You might have even solved it algebraically. If we were to solve this graphically, I would graph the expression on the right hand side of the linear equation and the expression on the left hand side of the linear equation and end up with two lines like so. Where they intersect will give us the solution to the equation. Now since the equation is one in terms of the variable x, we're looking for the value of x that would solve, solve the equation. And in this case, since the point of intersection has an x coordinate of 2, x equals 2 is the one and only solution. There are no other points of intersection uh, on this graph. For example, uh, x equals 3 is not a solution. Because if you substituted x equals 3 into this equation, you would get 2 times 3 plus 1 is 7, and 7 minus 3 is 4, and last time I checked, 7 is not equal to 4. Okay, so there's only one solution to this equation. Good. Let's now take a look at example number 2, which is an example of an identity. This actually also looks like an equation. Let's call it a statement of equality, right, because of the equal symbol. If I were to solve this uh, statement of equality, um, by graphing, I would graph the left-hand side, x plus 1 squared, and then I'd graph the right-hand side, and notice what happens there. The right-hand side has a graph that is exactly identical to the graph of the left-hand side, which means that they intersect in an infinite number of points, which means that the solution to this equation would be all values of x. And when that happens, we don't call it an equation anymore. We call it an identity, okay? Because this, uh, this is an identity because it works or is satisfied by all values of x, okay? Uh, and just remember, this is an equation. It doesn't work for all values of x. In fact, it's only satisfied by x equals 2. Okay, awesome. So that's the first two examples. The last two examples reinforce our understanding of the difference between equations and identities. Let's take a look at example number 3. Uh, this is an example of an equation. It's sine x is equal to cosine x. Let's solve it graphically. So here's y is equal to sine x, and here's y is equal to cosine x. And wherever they intersect, for example, this first point of intersection to the right of the y-axis is pi over 4. We've got one here at 5 pi over 4. We've got one out here at 9 pi over 4, etc. Okay, and there's more and more points of intersection to the right and to the left. This is an equation because it is not satisfied by all values of x. For example, it is satisfied by x equals pi over 4, right? Sine pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cos pi over 4, also root 2 over 2. That's why pi over 4 works. But pi doesn't work, right? If you substituted pi in for sine x, you would get 0. And if you substituted pi in for cosine x, you'd get negative 1. Well, 0 and negative 1 aren't equal. So again, this is an equation, right? An identity works for all values of x, whereas equations don't, okay? Now the reason why I'm showing this example is because some students might think of an equation as something with, if you'll remember this example here, something with only one solution, right? When I graph this, it only had one solution, okay? But here I've got, uh, and, and here you might say, well, this has got an infinite number of solutions, right? Because they graphed on top of each other. I don't want you to I don't want you to think of identities as equations that have an infinite number of solutions because if you thought that way then you would obviously think that sine x equals cosine x is an identity it does have an infinite number of solutions right pi over four five pi over four nine pi over four etc cetera, etc cetera. it has an infinite number of them but it's not an identity because it doesn't work for all values of x okay it just it's just an equation with an infinite number of solutions. All right, let's take a look at example number four at one last identity. In this case, we've got sine x is equal to tan x times cosine uh, x. And so again, I will approach this graphically. So there's sine x on the left-hand side, and here's cosine x on the right. And it looks like an open and shut case, right? Because the blue graph, or that of the uh, right-hand side of the expression, graphs right on top of, or is identical to, the graph of, the, of sine x, okay? But something interesting uh, happens here. If I, if I do this, let me just uh, show sine x. If I go and type in you know, f, at, uh, f at pi over 2, uh, that returns a y value of 1. Now let me just see if this is 
if this is true. If I go over here, there's pi over 2. Yes, in, in fact, it does return 1. Uh, but now if I go here and I type in g at pi over 2, notice it gives me undefined. Okay. Now, if the graphs are truly identical, then given a certain x value, they both should return the same y value. But they don't. In this case, we've got f returning 1 and g returning undefined. Evidently not the same y value. So is this, is this sine x equals tan x cosine x an equation or is it an identity? Well, in this case, we would still call it an identity. We would still say that it works for all values of x except where it is not defined. Or maybe an optimistic way of putting it is sine x equals tan x times cosine x is an identity where it is defined. Okay, so uh, what we're saying is except for the little discrepancies like this along the way, right? Well, we won't count those, but if you use any other x value, okay, then, then um, it is an identity. Now, one thing that you should know as to why this even happens is because tan x is really, if you think about it, on the unit circle, tan x is the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. But the y-coordinate is sine theta, and the x-coordinate is cosine theta. So really, if tan is y over x, then tan is really sine x divided by cosine x. Okay? And so this is a uh, way of expressing tan x as a rational function. And in your previous studies of rational functions, you would have learned that any value of the unknown that would make the denominator equal to zero would result in um, an undefined function. Okay, so cosine x, cosine x is equal to zero when x is equal to, for example, at one place would be at pi over two. Okay, so cos pi over two is zero. Sine x divided by zero, well, you can't divide by zero, so therefore, uh, we have an undefined expression for g at pi over 2. Okay, and so this this is why this happens. And so we would say that at x is equal to pi over 2, this function isn't defined, so we're not going to count those. So if we don't count those uh, places where the function is undefined, then we do in fact have an identity. And that's really the difference between equations and identities. An equation is um, a statement of equality that is satisfied by certain values of x. Okay. It might even be an infinite number of values of x, but only certain ones. An identity is a statement of equality that is satisfied by all values of x wherever the expression is defined. And that's it.